Welcome to the Law Firm Growth Podcast, where we share the latest tips, tactics, and strategies for scaling your practice from the top experts in the world of growing law firms. Are you ready to take your practice to the next level? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Law Firm Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Jan Roos, and we are here today with Rick Lewis. How are you doing today, Rick? I'm doing terrific. It's Friday. Yeah. Can't give me out about that. Just to give you guys a bit of an introduction, we're always on the look for ways to add value to clients. It is so competitive standing out in the market with legal today, as I'm sure I don't need to remind you. And uh, when we ended up finding out about Rick and the service that he was running, it was really a game changer. And we've actually introduced him to some of our clients before. They've done super well. And I just think more people need to hear about this message and the financial reality of America today. You had a really interesting story of how you discovered the issue that, that attorneys were facing in getting clients to have their cases funded. You mind uh, telling us a little bit more about that? Well, it's funny. I've been since EPA, I've been with EPA since January of 2012. And what I found, the program has been phenomenal for, you know, doctors, dentists, tech companies, you name it. We've got probably 20,000 businesses because any legal business can use this platform and except lawyers, it turned out. And I, got, I found that out because my son uh, had caught a DUI. And now he worked for Jimmy John's. Uh, he was an assistant manager. He made about 36000 a year. He was a young guy. So he couldn't get a public defender. He made too much money. But he also didn't have $5,000 in cash. And that was when I discovered attorneys either finance people themselves with payment plans or use went without an attorney. And so I started digging into what was involved there. And I wound up with a law firm out in California called Imhoff uh, that operates in 48 states. So they had, a, they had a real vested interest in having financing. Since 2008, the crash of 08, the average income, the average worker in the United States makes 30 grand. And that, that's for, you know, 30 some or 40 some percent, 51 percent make $30,000 and 71% make less than 50. So there's this huge problem of potential clients that do not have the cash, but they do have cash flow. And, you know, so this was a way for, you know, people to be able to finance and afford attorneys because they have to have their money up front. Uh, and the reason why I can go into it in a little bit, but basically payment plans, on the one hand, damned if you do and damned if you don't, You've got to offer them, but if you offer them, you're not going to get paid in full um, is the reality of it. And, and there, there are a lot of elements that go into that that was uncovered by Clio, which we can go into if you'd like. But long story short, uh, I found out that it couldn't be done. Uh, and in working with this law firm, we went through every censure and every disbarment in all 50 states and discovered there were only five bar rules because the bar wouldn't tell anybody what the rules were. You had to figure it out. And it took us three months to do. But once we figured it out, we structured the platform, restructured an element of the platform specifically to meet the requirements of the bar so that it opened up financing to attorneys for the first time. Yeah. So it sounds like quite a journey. And actually, uh, funny enough, we've had to get our own, um, there's a platform that we developed with some local marketing that we had to get through bar organizations ourselves in the last couple of months. And um, let me tell you, it has not been a cakewalk for us, but um, you know, there's always something on the other end of the line for, for people who are willing to push through it. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty interesting situation. Um, you know, the reality that you're kind of painting is that, you know, most of the people, you know, there's obviously a lot of these, you know, you, you kind of think about the, you know, the rich surgeon who gets a DWI, the trust fund kid who gets a DWI, but for the people that are, you know, most of the everyday Americans, and again, not just DWIs, but, you know, anything as far as family law goes, um, we've had stuff with trust in the state's clients, mutual clients of ours, Rick, you know, it's, it's very tough to put down the money for a legal retainer. I think you had to mention this too, as far as the average bank account values for somebody in, in the states. I've been looking uh, as of recent studies. Well, Forbes did an update on a study that was done in you know, like 2014. And in 2014, uh, it was like 52% of the public had less than a grand in the bank. Now it's 69%. And we have that right on our website, uh, the actual study. 
anytime we make a claim on our website, um, it's backed up by independent. We didn't, we didn't just come up with these numbers. Um, that's from Forbes. The, the earnings I gave you are from the Social Security, Social Security Administration. And we point you right at the original you know, studies uh, because it's true. And when you realize what's going on out there, um, it's pretty scary. And in that there's a reason why, it's kind of, the way I say it to people is, in 2008, the world changed and nobody got the memo. Um, <laughs> right, right. And that's, that's really true. The only people that are, that are able to take advantage of this are people that you know, have their ear to the ground and really watch the trends and the studies. We bring that all together for clients on our website. Yeah. So that's awesome, Rick. And, um, you know, not to uh, make this too much of a podcast about the, uh, the economics, because obviously this is a podcast about attorneys and, uh, you know, first of the, the places that we started seeing this on the marketing side was people making notes in the CRM for the leads they were saying, or sometimes we got comments like, Hey, look, these guys don't have any money. And the reality is unless you're typing or, you know, unless you're practicing some kind of contingency based law, like personal injury, maybe employment litigation, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you're going to have to ask somebody for a check. Yeah. <laughs> before you start working together. So, you know, in terms of what this kind of maps out to, uh, to attorneys, um, you know, there's some issues that you've been seeing that this platform has been solving, you know, there's some stuff around, um, you know, collections, that kind of thing that, that you guys have noticed, right? Well, once again, it wasn't us that noticed that, uh, Clio put together, puts together the most amazing surveys. Reuters does an okay job with small and medium firms, uh, but by far and away the best are by Clio. Uh, they interviewed 2,300 firms or surveyed 2,300 firms uh, for their 2017 study. And in that, you know, three elements came, really came through as the big, big holes in, in, a, pro, in a practice. And they all boiled down to people not having the money and the practice becoming the bank uh, payment plans. And they found, first of all, number one, uh, between 12 and 22% of your fee on a payment plan is typically never realized. You don't get paid. This is how guys wind up with 80, 100, $200,000 in receivables. Number two, they found that you spend a minimum of 12 or 6% of your admin time chasing your money um, because these people on payment plans don't always make the payments on time. And, and the more slippage there is, the, the worse it gets in your firm, the kind of the higher your blood pressure goes. This, goes to, this is gonna to go to the quality of life ultimately. And then the third thing, which was kind of surprising, is because you know you're chasing your money anyway right now, you don't give them your best work uh, because you're already kind of afraid, you're already afraid you're gonna be in the hole and you don't wanna go further into the hole. So what Cleo found was that on average, 18% less billable hours went into people with payment plans than people with paid in full retainers. So net net, it creates a compounding cascading effect that makes your life miserable. And, you know, it takes a lot of the joy out of law, frankly, and also creates a huge profit hole in your practice. And so that, that's what came from Clio. Um, and we developed a calculator off that because people really, I was amazed at how big those numbers get even for a solo. Yeah, no, I mean, this is the thing. I always make this joke that, you know, you, you got into to practicing law to practice law. And um, the last thing that most attorneys want to do is also be their own repo man. <laughs> 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 That's usually not what yeah. people are looking to do. Um, yeah. So, you know, can we get into a little bit more about how this is, how this is doable? So, um, you know, the kind of situation as it is, we've, we've kind of painted is, is a bit grim, you know, you've kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, you know, you, you, you don't want to be financing these people yourselves, but, um, you know, tell us more about the platform that you guys have developed, um, over at ePay and, and you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of options people might have with, uh, with financing? Well, the platform's kind of cool because let's go to these bar rules for a second. One of them is you can't have a formal or an informal relationship with a lender. So that kind of puts an attorney behind the eight ball in the first place. Another one of the rules is fair market pricing which is if you refer a client for financing, you have to have the reasonable expectation that they will be treated with fair market pricing. So this goes to the platform. The platform is 11 lenders that have agreed to lend in the legal arena with no restriction on case. Uh, they'll loan up to $50,000. They look at two things and two things only, 
debt to income ratio, which is their capacity to repay, and also their credit score, which is a characteristic of their character and their willingness to repay. So, I mean, it really, it meets, in meeting the bar rules, it serves the clients, both the clients and the attorneys, because ePay is not a lender. We simply have developed a platform that allows us to automate the underwriting algorithms so that people get an instant decision. So it's fast and it's easy. The mechanics of it is a client comes in, uh, you get to fees and they kind of, you know, they start to cool off a little bit. Uh, and they're either going to say, oh, well, I'll get back to you, or they come right out and ask for a payment plan. All right. So in either case, you say, you know, well, look, um, you know, a lot of, for a lot of people, you know, a $10,000 retainer is kind of a tough, you know, tough glass of water to drink. Um, would you be able to handle a payment of say 350 a month? Well, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. You refer them to the payment platform and they can have rates as low as 5.99. But in the case of challenged credit, cause they go down to a 600 credit score. All right. The lower the score, the higher the risk, the higher the rate. But the rate does cap at 35.99. Uh, the platform in general, not the legal platform, but the, the basic platform caps at like 90% APR. And you don't, as an attorney, you definitely don't want to have that come through. Uh, and that does not come through on the legal platform. So anyway, these letters are all competing for the client's business. And, you know, you can wind up, I, I've seen people get, you know, $30,000 with a 7.99 rate. Uh, so it can be great. And that way the client's not going to run out of money. They, the ones that say, well, I'll get back to you. I got, I got to go get liquid. Uh, Cause I had Joanne Ninevis uh, said that, you know, she took a client and it was a $20,000 retainer and the guy had great credit. And um, he said, well, I'll have to get back to you uh, because you know, I got to get liquid to give you the 20 grand. She says, well, we got this platform here. Why don't you give it a shot and take a look? Well, the guy's credit was great. So his, his rate was great. And he says, geez, I, I, this is less than I, than I get from my bank. This is great. I'll take it. And, and she locked the guy down right there in the office. He didn't go off and, to get liquid. So, I mean, it, it, it's a cool platform. And also, I kind of want to, to tack on to that a little bit, Rick, is, you know, as far as you know, where we come usually from the marketing and sales side, um, it's really important to give people the resources that they have to make a decision right away. And this is you know, with law or any business, really. And making it a no brainer like that um, is super powerful. And you know, one of the other things I have to say is, you know, if, if this is the first time you're hearing about this platform, um, you know, this is the first time a lot of the people in your market might be as well. And if you're the people that can offer payment plans, uh, if that's in your Google ad, if that's in the header of your website, if that's on your billboard, no matter how you're getting these people into the door, um, that's a competitive advantage against other people who are saying, hey, look, you know, you might need to, to sell your car to, uh, you know, make this, this payment if you want to get your you know, child support case uh, off and running or, or you name it, right? Yeah. No. Case says, and it's, you may, it's good that you mentioned the website because... If you don't let people know you've got it, you're really missing the ball. I mean, it's take a look at your web stats. If you're like most firms, if you have 100 unique visitors, only like 11 to 12 showed up on your intake log. Well, now you have to ask a question. Were they surfing your site for entertainment? Not, not real likely. Okay, so what happened to the other like 88 people that didn't call? Well, let's assume 18 of them just hate your website. It's all, the, the, the colors clash. I mean, whatever, all right? That leaves 70 people. Why were they there? Now, typically, the reason they don't call, what they're looking for is some kind of a, a way to feel they may be able to get a payment plan. Well, what if you had payment plans available right on your header, all right? And when they click it, they go through to a page that explains how the program works, says, you know, damage credit's okay. We go down to a 600 score. We actually go to a five, we go down to a 600 score unsecured. We have one lender on the platform. They'll go down to a 540. Now you mentioned the car, all right? <laughs> They'll take security. Um, so now here's something else to take a look at and, and something to think about in terms of just making, you know, you mentioned, you know, they want to practice law and not deal with all the business, all right? I have got a guy named Ed. He's, in, uh, he's a criminal guy in Chicago. And he says, I was talking to him about it, and he's getting about 35, 40% approvals. About 35% is about the minimum you're going to see, unless you've got the absolute dregs of society as your client base. Um, yeah, it can be a lot higher, but using 35% as a number, and he was hitting about that. He was hitting about 40, 42%.
And I was talking to him and I said, okay, well, you know, hey, isn't it great? Da, 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 you know, and he says, you know, Ricky says, yeah, it is great. He says, but I got to tell you, he says, the real value you guys offer me is, is not the paid in full. Don't get me wrong. I love getting paid in full up front. Says, but the real value is every client that walks through my door that gets cool about the money or, you know, ask for a payment plan outright is every one of them. I get to have 11 professional lenders look at them. Because I know that four of them are going to pay me and six are going to screw me. I just don't know which is which. And, <laughs> and he said, so, you know, your, your, your $99 a month customer support fee, he said, I pay 100 bucks a month to have 11 lenders look at a client so I don't get screwed. And he said, and I, I don't work after hours chasing money. My quality of life is great. He said, that's your real value is I know who to turn away and send to a competitor. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Uh, one of the best things for some uh, some prospects is to to gift them upon upon your competition. Let them let them stay up late. Uh, let them miss it out. <laughs> um, so to to kind of uh, go a little bit further on on the numbers on that, Rick. Now, one of the things we're kind of talking a lot about quality of life, but you know, there's obviously a uh, a big contribution to top line. So, uh, and if we're kind of looking at these, um, you know, these invisible nose that are people that aren't even reaching out to you, um, not like we can have uh, X ray vision and figure out what this is, but, but um, you guys do record some stats on, on how much the uh, practices are, are kind of increasing in their, in their retainers once uh, this gets implemented, right? Yeah. It, here, once again, we use Clio's numbers to come up with all the projections because 2,300 firms is a real good representation of what's out there and what really happens. And if you let people know you've got it and you do like Ed does, Everybody that comes through his door, unless they write him a check, he puts them on this program. And he knows right away if he's got a deal or not. And a deal to him, it's like Lauren said, is another criminal practice. She's a solo up in Minneapolis. And she's been with us since uh, September of 16. She's done over 200 grand with this thing. And she has no receivables. So, you know, in terms of what it can be, Okay, with Lauren, it's been about $100,000 a year, all right? And she doesn't have any receivables. She, she used to stop work at 5 o'clock and start her collection work at 5.30, and sometimes we wouldn't get home till 10, and she hated it. Yeah. That's, those days are gone. Yeah. So it's, yeah, there's, there's some definite top line benefits in, in, in addition to what we're getting from, from the quality of life stuff. Now, um, just as far as what it looks like to attorney. So, you know, it, once somebody gets set up with the program, um, there's a little bit of a, I think people should know about um, how this actually ends up working. So, you know, let's say that, you know, I'm running a you know, family law practice. Um, I've got a $5,000 retainer. I get somebody through this program. They're approved. What does it look like to that, that end user and what does it look like from my perspective? Okay, for the end user, there's a very short form. It's a practice branded portal that you've got, all right, where they go fill in about a minute and a half, two minutes worth of information. You know, who are you, where do you live, what's your email, and a couple of other things, all right? They do a soft credit poll so there's no impact on their credit score to find out how the thing's working, all right? Then they get an instant decision. They'll be all, receive offers from up to 11 lenders. Let's say they ask for five grand, but it's a family matter. Now, family matters typically will, can go as high as 15, 20 grand, all right? So even though they're only asking for five, if they're qualified, remember we said they use two things, credit score and debt to income ratio, all right? If that person can qualify for 30 grand, they're gonna see offers from that five all the way up to 30, all right? Now, we recommend that you recommend to your client, because they're never gonna be stronger than the day they first apply, take the highest offer you see. And the reason why is you just tell them, look, you don't wanna run out of money halfway through this thing, do you? And they go, well, no. All right, great. So let's say the client gets $20,000. They see an offer for that, they click on it. Our client support team, because there's no, we don't want to put any load in the law practice. They've already got enough problems with admin costs. They're, they're through the roof. All right, so we take care of everything. That's what that $99 a month buys them. All right, the moment they click on an offer, it does become an impact to their credit because they've accepted the offer. All right, now we need some documentation to get that loan funded because it's a very short form. They get a contact from our office. We walk them through getting their funding. 
We want to get them funded. If they come in Monday, we want them funded by Thursday afternoon, Friday morning so they can pay you. You see what they were offered. You see what they took. And you're always notified every touch point we have with the client you'll receive through your back office, which also is part of that 99. All right. You'll know exactly what's going on with the client every step of the way. So come Friday morning, they're funded. You'll get an email saying, congratulations, Jane Doe received $20,000, collect your fee and finish your transaction. Now there's some mechanics on your side that you want to do to make sure she doesn't, you know, go down the road to another attorney or, or decide to buy a trip to the Bahamas, you know, take a small deposit and let them know that the balance of the retainer is due uh, within 48 hours of funding. All right, so she comes in and she gives you $5,000. You're gonna receive an invoice from us, once again, through your back office, via email. Uh, you're gonna receive an invoice initially for 4.99% of the 20 grand she got. All right, but you didn't get 20 grand. You only took five for your initial, your initial retainer. Now you may go through the whole 20, but that doesn't matter to us. All right, because bottom line is we're only charging that 4.99 on your initial retainer. That was it. Yeah, and you'll get that as an invoice. And then to basically 10 days after you've collected your money, we're going to invoice you for 4.99% of the $5,000. And there's no more fees after that. Because, and this was another modification we made in the program, because you never know if, a, if where a matter is going to go. I mean, it may go through 20 grand, but you know, it may not. So we're not concerned about getting every po every possible nickel. I mean, if it was with a credit card, you're going to pay the the, the two and a half three percent of the full twenty thousand dollars. That's not true here. You're only going to pay on the initial retainer. So you know that's essentially how it works from your side and her side. You know, it's it's, it's a designed to be a seamless, no load system on everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's really important to kind of look through that because, you know, sometimes there are definitely some predatory lenders out there in the market, but you know, the thing that's really cool about this is that it's, it's a true win-win. Um, you know, you as the law firm are getting access to a completely, you know, different segment of the market. The people who don't have $15,000 sitting around in their bank account, that was just waiting for the day something bad would happen and they need to hire an attorney. Um, you know, you're getting access to those, you know, that huge and, and, and you know, unfortunately, increasingly um, large slice of uh, the population that's, uh, you know, financially strapped. And um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to think about how things can potentially change, um, you know, especially within the market dynamics you know if you guys are the only people offering this in, in an area it's great uh, but yeah i think it's it's just uh, super important that people hear this message um, well, so Rick, uh, point on that she won't yeah. give us a, ref a recommendation or a testimonial i asked her and she said you have to pay me i said lauren i can't pay you. it's an ethics violation and she said laughed and said i know and she <laughs> said but i don't want anybody else there's only two other attorneys in my market that have this and she said I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope uh, if any listeners are in Minneapolis, just uh, just delete this message, <laughs> delete this podcast episode and uh, pretend she's in Minneapolis, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're from Minneapolis, just delete this. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. I mean, th th here's the thing. There are so many people out there. A week at MasterCard and Visa 25 years ago, was cutting edge in law. I mean, if you don't have it, it's good. the day's gonna come where if you don't have financing, you're gonna be the dinosaur. Right, yeah, and the people who jump on the trend right now are the ones who are gonna probably benefit. Like, I, I like to make this analogy for a lot of the marketing stuff. You can imagine the amount of money that the first guy to run a personal injury ad in the yellow pages did the sixties or whenever that ended up coming out. But uh, oh, yeah. it's the same thing. The early adopters are the ones who tend to get the most share because that's, you know, and anything that's, that's client facing, it's, you know, uh, it's unique in a market before it becomes uh, you know, commonplace and you, you don't want to yeah. be the laggard. Well, you know, you can, <laughs> there's it's, sometimes it's very expensive to be the first early adopter, but in this case, you know, it's more likely than not to be something that puts money into your pockets. I mean, obviously this probably isn't a big factor for stuff like, you know, contingency based stuff, but you know, for the, for the different uh, retainer based practice areas, where do you see, uh, the most people? Okay. There's no practice area limitation. Right, from the lender's perspective, which is groundbreaking and game changing. But I had a, I had an IP guy in Florida. Uh, I thought IP, 
And he says, listen, businesses run on budgets. And you get into an IEP issue, it can go 20, 30 grand real quick. And he said, most people aren't ready for that. I have yet to meet a client that couldn't use an extra 40 or 50 grand in a pinch. And I'll tell you what, professional license, you know, a doctor gets caught in the uh, drug cabinet and now his medical license is on the line. He's a doctor. Of course he's got money. Maybe he could use the 50 grand so he doesn't have to liquidate everything and he can still make his life work and not have to think about it and panic. And it just, it makes life easy for well-heeled clients. This was true also. Uh, we just picked up a large uh, asset management. Uh, they do trusts. They do same thing. You know, you a trust might have 10 trusts in it. Well, at two grand a trust, now you're talking about a $40,000 deal. They walked in the door for a will. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if you can take the sticker shock off, it opens the door. And they they can pay the thing off, you know, down the road, because there's no prepay, no, no prepay penalties on these things. So you can pay it off down the road when it suits you to get liquid. I mean, there really is, if you deal with the general public and you are not pro bono and you're not contingency, this will make you money. All right. Awesome. So public defenders and personal injury guys, <laughs> sorry about this. Uh, you know, we're, we're still looking for cool stuff for you guys, but um, yeah, for everyone else, I think it's, it's a really serious consideration to make. Um, like I said, uh, you know, I'm always on the lookout for stuff that's going to make a difference for having, helping people have their law practice stand up. And this is um, one of the things I think is, is super, super um, it's a huge opportunity. So Rick, just, um, you know, as far as, uh, I know you guys launched the, the new site recently. Um, where's the best place people can find you next steps if they're interested in something like this? Epaylegal.com. So yeah, Rick, that's super helpful. Um, yeah, like I said, this was uh, some really mind blowing stuff when I, when I found out about it. And um, if you guys are a little bit more curious, by all means, definitely go to that site. Um, yeah, that's probably the first step. But if anyone wants to reach out to you directly, uh, besides the site, is there a better way to get in touch with you, Rick? You can pick up the phone and call me. Well, okay. my email is easy. It's yeah. rick at epaylegal.com. All right. Awesome. Well, hey, Rick, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. Really, really great information I think people need to hear. This is Jan Roos from the Law Firm Growth Podcast, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Law Firm Growth Podcast. For show notes, free resources, and more, head on over to casefuel.com slash podcast. Looking forward to catching up on the next episode.